A solicitor's undertaking is a special sort of promise that must be delivered because a failure to complete an undertaking will often be considered professional misconduct or unsatisfactory professional conduct. In this case, a solicitor was acting for a client in a commercial real estate transaction. The transaction required a short-term loan of $400,000 from the bank. The bank would only give that loan if they had a written undertaking from the borrower's solicitor that the loan would be repaid on time. Somewhat unwisely, the solicitor gave the undertaking. Why was this unwise? Well, a solicitor should only give an undertaking in relation to things that they can personally control. They should really never give an undertaking that relies on someone else doing the things that they need to do. In this case, the deal started falling apart and the client failed to come up with the $400,000. The bank then sued to enforce the undertaking. This meant that they were demanding that in order to ensure the undertaking was delivered, the solicitor had to come up with the $400,000. The court agreed that the undertaking should be honoured, but the court was not really that interested in the bank getting its $400,000. The court was more interested in upholding the notion that a solicitor's undertaking was unbreakable, no matter what. Justice Wiley said, One cannot, of course, help feeling a certain sympathy for the defendant who has so unwisely given such a personal undertaking and is now caught up in its consequences, especially when those consequences are of such magnitude. But to excuse the defendant from performance would, in my opinion, seriously undermine the justifiable claims of the legal profession to standards of integrity and honourable conduct, upon which both the profession and the public have constantly to rely. In order to demonstrate the insistence by the courts that these standards are to be maintained, the disciplining of those who breach them is a very necessary, if regrettable, action to be taken. From this case, we learn two things. First, it is incredibly unwise for a solicitor to give an undertaking that relies on the conduct of a third party, because the solicitor will be responsible for the conduct of that third party. And second, when the court enforces an undertaking, it does so for the purpose of maintaining the integrity of the profession and the reliability of those undertakings.